crowd of Grandpa? 10 o'clock. Well, first, uh, it's good to be back in the Capitol. I haven't been here for quite a while except to say hello to some of my masted friends. Uh, but the other thing I would note is that there was never this many microphones when I was running this place. And uh, so I appreciate the fact that uh, you're all here. The, uh, have you got it? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Well, listen, it is, uh, it is good to be back in the Capitol, and especially for such a great occasion. Uh, as you all know, I spent 14 years as lieutenant governor, serving longer than any other lieutenant governor in the history of Idaho. And so I can speak from a little experience as being lieutenant governor and what is exactly expected and then not expected uh, of a lieutenant governor. Having served uh, the 14 years, three different governors, three decades in two separate centuries, uh, I, had, uh, I had quite an experience. And as you'll recall, my first two terms were under a member of the opposite party. And we got along great. And we got along great because uh, Cease would call me into the back office and say, we've got to do this and we've got to do that. And if I disagreed with him, I told him I disagreed with him and why. But there was never any question in my mind uh, who was the governor. And uh, we had set our personal agendas aside because, as you'll recall, in 1987, the state of Idaho wasn't in very good shape. But by the time Cease left office and Phil Batt took over, uh, and Phil Batt and I had a great relationship, uh, there were a lot of things that uh, both Cease and Phil and Dirk uh, let me do that a lot of lieutenant governors before me uh, had not had a chance to do. Isn't that right, Dave Leroy? In a way, uh, I would tell you that, that uh, I am really pleased uh, that Scott Bedke is running for lieutenant governor. <laughs> working, work, I only got so much time. Working with Scott, I can tell you, uh, as the assistant majority leader, as a state legislator, and then later on as speaker, has, uh, has been a great experience. Uh, all you can expect from those that you have to work with in politics is honesty, straight talk, and a willing to take an opposite, but not, not an obstinate position. And that was, Scott, that is Scott Bedke. Uh, Scott uh, has, always come to every meeting well prepared and has done his homework and ready to make a contribution. Even, even if he may have some opposition, he'll let you know that. And that's what I expected. And that's exactly what I got. The record of success under Speaker Bedke, I think, is, has been great. The longest serving Speaker of the House, uh, for the state of Idaho uh, has accomplished an awful lot. Working with diverse interests, uh, he has still uh, brought the state of Idaho forward and the number one economy uh, in the country. Has set the pace for other states to look at and say, why can't we do what they have done up in Idaho? Following Governor Littles, following Governor Otter's lead, he was always prepared to help us get where we knew that we needed to for the benefit of Idaho. And so I would tell you that what do I expect? One of the greatest strengths that we have in the state is the strength that we have in the homes. In fact, if you'll recall, uh, well, I wasn't there. People think I was when John Adams said uh, that our Constitution, our form of government, was not constructed for a country weak in the home. And so of all the other things that we do in state government, it should be to strengthen the home because that is the organic level of government. The, the, the home is the and the family is the first level of government. And if that's not working, 
which works pretty good in Idaho. If that's not working, then you can't expect the rest of the government to do. So for the future of Idaho, for the greatness that we can expect, I give you Scott Bitke. Sarah and I have been married for 41 years, and we represent the fourth generation on the family cattle ranch that was started by my grandfather in the 1870s, my great-grandfather in the 1870s. Our four children, their 14 kids, our grandkids, some of who are here today, represent the fifth and sixth generation of Bedkeys in Idaho. We're proud of our family, we're proud of our faith, and we're proud to be Idahoans. I'm pro-life, pro-gun, and a limited government constitutional conservative. As Lieutenant Governor, I'll bring all of the things that I've learned serving in the People's House to the executive branch of the state of Idaho. I'm the only candidate in the race who has tested and trusted experience in getting things done for Idaho. I come from a legacy of hard work, of never quitting until the job was done, where the phrase was often used, bring a lunch and a flashlight because we're going to be out until we're finished. That was a phrase that was commonly used and it still is in, in our household. This is a legacy of hard work that I will bring to the office of the Lieutenant Governor. In fact, it's because of this tradition of hard work and determination to finish every job that I start that I intend to stay fully committed and engaged to the end of my term as Speaker. As Speaker, I've been directly involved in getting and setting the policies that make Idaho the great state that it is today. I've worked with multiple governors, four to be, in, four to be accurate, to cut taxes, to eliminate red tape, to invest in our roads and bridges, and to improve education and I've fought against the federal government interference and protected Idaho's conservative values every step of the way. This is why Idaho is consistently ranked number one as the best place to live, the best place to work, and the best place to raise a family. I've also been directly involved in setting economic policies here for the state of Idaho. Now there's a lot of detail in those policies, but they can be summed up in two statements. First, year in and year out, we live within the people's means. We never commit or spend money that we do not have. And second, we've created the least regulated state in the nation and created a climate where businesses, small and large, can prosper and where Idaho families can thrive. But you know, there's an old saying that says, success is never final. And that means we still have a lot of work to do. Education has always been very important to the Bedke family. And during my time as Speaker, Idaho has consistently increased its investment year over year into our K-12 through school system. <clears throat> as parents and grandparents, we know that a quality education is essential to our kids' success. As a grandfather myself, I have a vested interest in making sure that our children leave Idaho schools well prepared for life. During my tenure as Speaker, we made unprecedented investments in our state's road system. I was a key leader in every major transportation package that, is, that uh, we've had and successfully carried transportation budgets across the House floor. Our long-term success as a state will largely be defined by our investments that we make, not only in the education system, but in the transportation systems. <clears throat> and you know, Many of you know that I can't stand in front of a microphone for very long without talking about Idaho's water. <laughs> as, uh, as, speaker, as Speaker, I've, neg I've successfully negotiated and settled long-standing water disputes and conflicts that have plagued our state for decades. As a tested, trusted, and experienced leader on water issues, I will request that Governor Little assign me a prominent role in arguably the most important issue facing our state, that is our water. As your, as your Lieutenant Governor, I'll protect Idaho's water in the future, not just for us, but for all the generations that come. As Lieutenant Governor, you're going to get from Scott Bedke exactly what you've always got. 
a fierce, hardworking, savvy defender of Idaho's conservative values, despite any and all obstacles that might come our way. I'll do everything in my power to defend Idaho's future. In closing, I want the Office of Lieutenant Governor to be recognized for its advocacy, for its action, its accomplishments, and for its decency. That's what the people of Idaho deserve, and that's what I will deliver. As this campaign starts, I ask each of you for your help, for your support, and most importantly, for your vote. Thank you all for being here today. May God bless you, and God bless the great state of Idaho. Thank you. That's a great question. I have, uh, I'm the longest serving speaker in state history and I've been and I will have completed my 11th term, 22 years in the, in the House and it's, it's time to, to step aside and let others take my place. I feel like I can best advocate for Idaho and its values uh, as Lieutenant Governor, continue what I've, already, what I've always built on, the experience and the lessons that we've learned in, as Lieutenant Governor. Who's going to take your place? Well, that's a very good question, but it doesn't. It's not a question that needs to be answered today. Uh, oh, sure. Come it'll on. be in December of 2022, and I'm sure that there'll be someone that distinguishes themselves by that time, and it'll be a natural transition. How will I run? Well, exactly like I always do. We'll put together a great organization, and then I'll bring my rancher work ethic to make it happen. Well, there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of talk in this campaign, but I'm going to I will get results. The que you know the question is to put a little finer point on why I'm running, and it's much like I said earlier. I feel like I bring the experience and knowledge to the things that count here in Idaho, and uh, I want to further that in this next office. <laughs>